Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Sailing Towards Osiris, and it is for uh, two to five players, about an hour to play, maybe a little more, at ages 12 and up by Daily Magic Games. Sailing Towards Osiris is basically a game that is themed in Egypt. The pharaoh has died, and the pharaoh's little sailboat, or yacht, or whatever you want to call it, is going across the river, and uh, you're basically going to be one of the governors, one of the head people in the town, and you need to build monuments and statues for the pharaoh as it travels across this river. Now, there's going to be certain amounts of rounds for the game, and each round is going to open up the board, giving you more actions and more play spaces to gather more resources to build more monuments. The game is obviously about getting points because you want to build favor with the pharaoh, and so at the end of the game, after the boat has traveled all the way across the river, you're going to be tempting to score the most points by having the most monuments in the right ways built because there's certain ways you can build the monuments uh, the resources are like you're gonna have like wheat and stone and brick and you'll be utilizing these for building monuments there's a certain requirement for each of the type of monuments you want to build you'll also be utilizing cards here boon cards that will basically give you some benefits and all the different gods here are basically the ones that are going to be giving you those benefits and uh, that's the basic idea of the game i'll go ahead and take you down below and show you a little bit about the game i'll give you a little overview of it and then i'll come up and i'll tell you what i think about sailing towards osiris by daily magic games so here we have sailing towards osiris and everything included other than the box of course which is beautiful i'll go ahead and open this up really quick it has a beautiful insert for everything you need in the game nice quality box this game is obviously from production it's ready to go you can purchase it on link in the description below uh, these are the resources here you can get the brick the stone and the wheat these are your basically worker actions they'll be in this bag here and throughout the game uh, before each round you'll be drawing from the bag and utilizing these actions you're going to have your own player board which basically has a hidden uh, resources that you can hide behind it you can hide all your cards and all that good stuff and it also tells you some important things like how you build the monument monuments is going to score you more points on each side there's a little special bonus points and uh, not only that but what you have in to begin the game with okay so you're also going to get these boon cards each player will get a set and they're all the same but they all provide a special benefit you can only use uh, one type per round so if somebody else has already used Anubis you can't use it that round and you can only use one per round uh, these are all the different player colors there's five players here and it comes with different meeples so you're going to have these larger temples you're going to have the sphinxes which are a little smaller and then of course the smallest little basalt um monuments you're also going to get this caravan piece which will allow you to go to these locations here and you can gain the main caravan if you're the first one there or the lower one if you're the second one there and you can also you also have these things here which will end, indicate that you've ended your turn or ended your round uh, these are the characters that you'll be utilizing for worker placement which you'll be putting on the board based on their color and as you can see they have their own uh, unique colors as to where they go and you'll be scoring resources and then you'll be utilizing those resources to build monuments over here are all the monuments that you can go ahead and place down as long as you have the appropriate resources these are cards that you can gain from the city spaces here when you place down meeples and you get two of them and you're gonna go ahead and give one to another player and you can of course use these to trade which is also interesting as well uh, these guys here are special they're little colored pieces and they will let you put them anywhere on the board regardless of whether you're normally allowed to or not in each of the rounds as you'll see one two and three and four rounds you are only able to place in the indicated area and behind it so round one you can place from here all the way around around two you can place all of this all the way around and three and then four if you get to the fourth round these guys instead of being able to be placed anywhere uh, that normally couldn't be placed you would simply be able to place them and gain an extra resource so in this case you get three as opposed to two. Oh, sorry this is a better one you gain three as opposed uh, four as opposed to three okay so that's how this works uh, this over here is basically a uh, first player turn marker and this will change not based on going clockwise but whoever ends their turn first or ends the round first they're going to simply say I am done I'll place that out they're then going to gain a resource of their choice one of these five this one will give you like a point and also a, a piece this is three pieces five pieces and whatever you put it on is what you're going to gain 
Uh, and then you're also going to get this, and that'll indicate that you're the first player for the next round, which is very useful. Being first is very important. Uh, you're also going to have these over here. These guys are actually your point totals, and of course, you all start at zero, but as you move across the board, you're going to be gaining points. All of these buildings are worth two. These are four, and these are seven, and they're indicated by these things here, also represented by on your meeples. You can also gain bonus points by making sure you place them adjacent to each other at the end of the game, and like I said before, your scoreboard will tell you it, how many points you gain. So in this case, you're going to get three points or two points for doing that. So like I said, you're also going to have rounds in play. And at the end of after everybody has ended their round by playing their pieces here, the boat will move on and then you would continue and the boat would move on. And you can't place in the same space as another player places. You can also, like I said, use caravan spaces, the city for drawing cards, and then the three basic spaces. And uh, there's a last thing, which is this thing over here, which is going to be your market where you can trade one for two, two for two, so on and so forth. This lets you trade uh, to gain resources here, which is very, very valuable and really, really cool. But pretty much that's the basic idea of the game. You're going to be doing a little bit of worker placement. You're going to be doing a little bit of trading and bartering and building. And then, of course, gaining the points and scoring bonus victory points and utilizing these cards along with these ones that have not only the ability to use whatever it says on the bottom, but you can also discard them and gain the resources for it. And people are going to be playing a turn by turn, a turn by turn fashion with actions. And I had to actually write down all the actions in this game because there's so many. Harvesting resources. You can visit a city. You can join a caravan or you can start a caravan. You can hire an extra laborer. You can trade at the market. Uh, you can plan a monument by putting one on. You can build a monument by placing one down. You can play a city card. You can play a boon card. You can withdraw from a season, which is basically ending it by playing this thing. And then when you withdraw, you're going to get the regent bonus, the regent token, and uh, go first on the next season. I strongly suggest you make something like this because there's a lot of stuff you can do in this game, even though it's fairly simple and easy, easy and easy to understand how to play the game. But anyway, that's the basic idea for sailing towards Osiris. Uh, uh, let's go up and talk about what I think about the game. So I didn't explain exactly how to play the game, but I think you got the basic gist of it. There's plenty of great walkthroughs and reviews on this game already to show you how to play it. I'm just going to give you basically my uh, positives and negatives for the game here. Now, the first thing I'll go with is why not negatives, because there's not very many of them in the game, but one of them is the first player that gets to go first obviously has a benefit, and uh, that just is chosen randomly at the start of the game, which kind of, I guess, kind of sucks because other players don't get any kind of rectification for somebody else going first. It makes sense at as the rounds progress, because in the second, third, and fourth, you have to end first to be able to go, end first to be able to go first on the next round. And that makes sense, and that is fair. Uh, the other thing that was irritating, I guess, is like I was showing you guys this big piece of paper. This is all the actions in the game. There's a ton of them, but they're all pretty simple and easy to understand now. And it only kind of bugs me for the first game, because you're going to need to remember those actions. I don't think there is a, a player reference that show, tells you what all the actions are. And like I said, there's probably like eight to ten of them that you can do. But they're all pretty simple. Building and planning and placing and collecting and trading and that kind of stuff. But it's still... There's just, you know, a lot. But now that I've played it once, just one time, I was able to... Uh, well, sorry, now that... Once I had played it once, uh, the second and third time I played it, I was able to remember all of the all of the actions fairly easily, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but still, you know, I can see how that can be a little confusing for some players, especially if you don't play a lot of board games. Uh, okay, now, the good stuff. The artwork is amazing. If you like Egyptian-themed games, this is a really solid one as well. And you do feel like you're building monuments as the pharaoh is passing through the... Uh, the Osiris River. I think, that's, I think that's what it is. Osiris is a river. I don't know. Or well, maybe the Nile. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, the meeples are cool. There's a bunch of different types. They all go in their own location in the box and it works very well. In fact, I really, really, really enjoyed this game. Uh, I don't know what it was, but being able to utilize the caravans and there's just so many options that you can choose from. It almost feels like most of the time in a three, uh, three or four player game, you're not as likely to get really messed over you are and there's certain spaces where you're going to be like i wish i would have played there but most of the time the most of the time when you're making mistakes it's your own fault because you didn't see the better action until it was too late or you assumed your opponent wasn't going to play somewhere and then they did and you can kind of rectify your miscalculations and then the next time you play it you're going to get better and you do get better in the game which is a nice sign for a game in my opinion is the more you play it the better you get at it right there's no problem with a game being random and you just win or lose like exploding kittens but if you want a ni de nice deep strategical game then you want to be able to learn and improve as you play the game and of course there's a social aspect to the game you can trade these cards 
which is okay. You're not going to do it in a three-player game, but it's good in a four- and five-player game, as well as trying to say, oh, you know, if you place there, I'll place here, or don't place here because then I'll let you place here. You can do kind of that stuff in the game, and it has that social aspect, but overall, it's basically a worker placement that has a hidden little tableau, and you're kind of just trying to build your best the best monuments you possibly can. It works well, it flows well, and after the first game and you have the hiccups of learning all the different actions, the game is wonderful. I really, really enjoyed this game, and I think if the game sounds any what interesting to you, you need to check out this game, because uh, it had been a while since I had played a worker placement that I uh, was like, wow, like stunning, stunned as to how much fun it was and how vibrant and beautiful the game was. This one definitely would get my seal of approval. This is the first one in like, I don't know, a month or something like that. So, excellent game. Do check out Sailing Towards Osiris by Daily Magic Games if it seems like something you'd be interested in picking up. It's a big game. It's got a little bit of strategy in it. Not too complex. It does take a little bit of time, but overall, excellent game!